game. I mean, the temperature in the locker room didn't change, but it's clear you know, you wanted this game. Why was it important? Um, just to respond, um, you know, teams are, you know, uh, are being a little bit more physical and they think that's the, the, the ticket to, to getting us out of our comfort zone. And, you know, we got to be ready to fight. Um, you know, I think a part of it, too, is like we're adjusting to how the game is being called. The whistle is being a little is a little different, you know, kind of out of nowhere. Right. And like I asked the officials about it and they kind of act like they don't know what you're talking about, but it's clear like that across the league that um, they're not calling as much fouls. It's a little bit more physical. Last night, the Celtics go back into the win column. All five starters had over double figures, and we just played a complete level of basketball for the majority of the game. Now, the first quarter was not very good. We allowed 37 points, only scored 28. But after that point, after the first quarter, we locked in. Our defense was insane allowing 20 points in the second, 11 points in the entirety of the third quarter, and 24 in the fourth quarter. Defensively, we looked like one of the best teams in the NBA again on that side of the basketball. Offensively, there was still a lot to be desired, but I think that we are taking the right steps to getting back into rhythm before the start of the playoffs. Now, in this video, I want to break down some film, and I'm going to show you exactly how the Celtics got this win by not doing that. Like I said, first quarter was bad. But we're going to show you why they won this game, how they won this game, and why they're still the best team in basketball. All right, here we go. This was one of my favorite plays of the night by the Celtics. And this is something you're going to see a lot more for the Celtics as we progress into the playoffs. So what we're going to see here is boom. Let me stop it right here. Now, what you notice right now is what looks like Tatum coming off the screen to get an open three. That's what this is setting up to look like, right? So you already see Valanciunas starting to maybe try to hedge over it, but this is what in reality it actually is, right? So Porzingis is setting a quote unquote ghost screen. Now what that basically means is he's not actually going to screen for Tatum on this play. He's going to tap the player on his back, forcing uh, Jonas Valanciunas to think, okay, we got to switch. I got to now go on Tatum, and Herb Jones has to switch onto Porzingis. But in reality, he doesn't even set a screen. He's just going to drop back into the three-point line, and now Tatum gets in the way of Jonas Valanciunas. Now, go screen is very, very useful. I mean, it confuses defenses, and it forces someone to switch when they didn't need to switch in the first place. So, boom, now Porzingis gets a wide-open three, three. And this go screen is absolutely a difference maker, right? The Celtics are starting to run this a lot where, boom, you're not even actually setting the screen. What you're doing is just forcing these defenders to just confuse themselves. Am I switching? Am I not switching? And that moment of them being like, oh, what do I do? Gets us a three-pointer, right? Amazing pass there by Drew. Beautiful go screen. Tatum gets in the way. And Porzingis gets the easiest three of the game set up by the go screen. Guys, go screens are going to absolutely take over the NBA soon. Defenses aren't going to know how to stop it every single time. Right, here's an amazing play by the Celtics as well. Now we're heading into the second quarter where we started to make that comeback. Went on a 31 to 20 run in the second quarter. Now on this play again, you're going to get a pick and pop here by Al Horford and Drew Holiday. Instead of finding this mismatch here, let's actually move the ball, swing it around the floor. So we're going to drop a play here to get the ball to Jalen Brown at the top of the key. But what to notice is the backside, right? The weak side, you're going to see Xavier Tillman and Derek White set up a play. Now obviously Herb Jones, Larry Nance are already starting to ball watch a little bit, which means that if you swing this ball quick enough, you will be able to get an open shot. So boom, let's kick it over to JB. No look, makes the defense hesitate for just a second. Now they're starting to move, okay? Tillman says, hey, Derek White, go, 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 right? Coming off this pin down, let's get Tillman in the way, right? Good screen, boxing him out, and here we go. Derek White up the screen. You need to be quicker, Larry Nance. Once he sets that screen, you need to be full throttle into gear, finding or getting to that three-point line. Derek White's able to get a wide open three, and again, beautiful basketball, right? We set the attention on the, on the strong side here with a pick and roll, pick and pop. On the top of the, or, you know, right side, or left side, I should say, right? But let's get it to the opposite side. On the weak side, 
forcing the defense to panic, uh, rotate slowly, and that's exactly what happens. I think this is a beautiful play by Boston, and one of the one of the plays that really helped us, uh, you know, get back into this basketball game, right? But if you did have Larry Nance close out pretty well here, like if he right away, boom, let's go hedge off the screen, you have Al Horford underneath the basket over Dyson Daniels. Either way, Celtics basketball, they're really starting to play well. The plays that they're running are getting back into action. Now, one of the main reasons I love Derek White as a Celtic is the man's IQ, right? He always makes the right pass, okay? Now, on this play, again, we're going to get an actual screen, not a ghost screen, but what Porzingis is going to do is actually very good. So, he's going to come off the screen and drive right to the basket, kind of like that play Marcus Smart and Rob Williams used to run. It would be a pick and roll or, yeah, pick and roll and then throw that lob up to him, right? So, boom, they're, they're going to do it. Derek White quickly going to drive into the three-point line as Porzingis goes full throttle into the paint. Now you get your weak side defender coming backside, trying to hedge uh, Porzingis from getting into the paint. So boom, Derek White now has Zion on a switch, still has McCollum going, getting over the screen, now leaving Jalen wide open for three. And trust me, you do not want to leave Jalen for three, open for three. Just ask the Golden State Warriors and ends up getting a wide open one to drain there. And just like that, it's a tie game. Now, real quickly, guys, before we get into this next play by Jason Tatum, do me a quick favor, hit that like button just so we can get this video out to more Celtics fans around the world. We will be posting non-stop coverage of the Celtics for the rest of the season, including the playoffs. And guys, get this. We watch every single game live on stream. So if you want to watch these games, break it down in real time, make sure you guys subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost anything to join the family. And we're going to be doing this all year long, including the playoffs. So make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. But on this play specifically, what we're going to see is Jason Tatum against the post up. Now, previously in this game, every time Jason Tatum spins baseline, they draw he draws a double team, right? So that is one thing that he has noticed throughout the first quarter and a half, that they double team off the baseline when he spins. So boom, he's going to fake that spin, draw the extra defender here in Larry Nance. You have Herb Jones uh, over committing to that spin. Boom, let's fade away the other way. An absolute amazing shot by Jason Tatum. These are the shots I want to see him hit with the game winners, man. Not the fadeaway threes, but that shot. That is his game right there, man. Beautiful, beautiful. Guys, real quickly, before we finish off this video, I need you guys to do me a big favor. Underdog Fantasy is doing the most legendary thing in the world. Not only if you use my code in the description, they will give you a free $100 depending on how much you first deposit, but also they're going to give you a free square as well. Now, what that means is, for example, let's just say Jimmy Butler, right? They're going to have Jimmy Butler over half a point, right? And every single couple of days, they're going to give you freebies that you can just easily win money on. Go claim your free $100 by depositing $100 or whatever you want. They'll match your first deposit, but also go get a free square. Go win money. They have so much you can bet on, and it's not just basketball. If you like MLB, MLB's here as well. They have tennis. They have NHL. They have soccer. They have uh, women's soccer, FIFA, esports, racing, golf. They have everything you could think of, and they have live drafts as well. So if you want to get in an MLB draft and play that, you can. If you want to get in an NBA draft and play with some people, some of your friends, you can do that as well. If you use my code in the description, not only will they match your first deposit, but they're going to give you free money as well in terms of these little bets, right? These little bets that you can put in. Tyrese Hyburn over half a point, the easiest money you'll ever make in your life. Go check it out, and let's get right back into the video. All right, guys, let's get back into some more ghost screen action and see how it utilized or gets utilized on this play. So again, let's set a ghost screen. What does that mean? Let's not actually set the pick, but force the hedge defender to think we're screening the man Herb Jones here. So boom, let's set this fake screen and then just cut, right? So Larry Nance right away is thinking, okay, Herb is getting screened. We're going to do this thing where we switch off every screen. So in theory, it should be Larry Nance on Derek White, Herb Jones getting to the basket with Chris Stapps Porzingis, right? So boom, right when they don't do that, you're going to kick over because obviously you don't have a clear pass lane right there. going to be a tough pass. So kick over to Jalen. Jalen makes an unbelievable pass right away. Quick. Doesn't even matter. And now we get the backside, the weak side help here on Zion Williamson. You even get Trey Murphy driving in a little bit here, trying to help inside the paint. Now, Chris Stapps can do one of two things, right? He can try to get an easy bucket, getting his man Zion up into the air, or he can kick out to, to Drew. 
But if you're smart, I think the, this defender here, Trey Murphy, is going to rotate to the corner. You could have Tatum open for three, but, but he does the easy thing, right? Let's get our guy up in the air. Let's throw down a dunk. Gets it to go. We need to remember, though, on these plays, we can easily get open threes depending on what this extra defender does and you obviously see right here herb jones and larry nance saying hey they're they're obviously talking to each other they're like what are we doing what are we doing you know what i mean they're obviously confused because of that ghost screen because of that ghost screen man they don't know what's going on they're pissed off hey the ghost screen is really working all right here's another beautiful play here this is what's known as a verizon screen saw this a lot back in cleveland with, Le with lebron james so what that means is he is going to fake like he's going to set a screen on the left and actually move over to the right side. Now, you might ask, well, what's the point of that? Well, it actually has a very big point. It's very nice. So once you see balance units pick up the left side, try to hedge off the left, the right is now wide open, right? So usually if you set a screen on the left, the, uh, you know, the screener's defender will hedge up, right? Or if you screen it on the right, he'll hedge up, right? So either way, the strong side of that screen is going to be covered relatively well. But once you verge out screen, now you have two guys on the left, nobody on the right, and now the defense is not in place to defend this, this play, right? Comes off the screen, Herb Jones does a good job going over, but Tatum has no hedge defender here. Usually it would be Val if he was protecting the opposite side, and boom, wide open three, and again, gets it to go. I mean, guys, the plays that the Celtics are running are extremely smart, and man, they're, they're really getting into action, they're really starting to work. Now, if you guys want more film breakdown, comment down below the number one, but also subscribe, hit the like button, join the family, man. Non-stop Celtics videos for the rest of the season. Love this play here by Porzingis, right? Draw that double double team. You fake that, you that shot, kick out to Sam Hauser. Boom, pull up three, wide open. I love that ball movement, man. Love that ball movement. You know, Porzingis is such a smart player. You talk about, you can already tell they're starting to hedge, but you need to make sure he is closer to you before you pass that ball so he can't get over there and close out, right? So boom, pump fakes it, gets him right on his, right on him, and then boom, great pass, right? Hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, join the family, turn on post notifications if you guys want more videos. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Happy Easter. Have a good day, boys.